Happy Sunday! This video is called Perspectives on God, the Universe, and Reality Tunnels. My name is Phil Osaphical, and so in this video I'm going to explore some of the perspectives on God and religion and things of that sort. Uh, spirituality, there's all these different labels and names and various perspectives out there. So I'm going to explore them a little bit in this video and I would love to hear what your perspective is and your input or comments or ideas on all these different perspectives. So, um, the general perspective of our culture is, is one of scientific materialism, as you could say, which basically thinks that only the material world exists and uh, there's no external invisible God or there's no invisible forces. Everything can be explained by science and um, it's very rational and uh, a part of it is this term of reductionism that you can reduce things to their component parts and figure them out and that's generally what science does and it's had a lot of success and so for example Isaac Newton figured out the basically these principal laws of the universe and he realized that, oh, we can explain everything without any external God, so therefore God doesn't exist unless he was the guy who set everything in motion and then just let this clock tick forever, you know? And uh, so the general perspective of scientific materialism goes along with atheism, which doesn't believe in God or the supernatural. But I, I like to question things. I like to question everything. And so I, I like to question what the word God even means. There's so many different ways you can look at it. And um, part of the title is Reality Tunnels. And a reality tunnel, basically I perceive it as everyone is in their own reality tunnel and perhaps all the reality tunnels flow into one big reality funnel and um, and everyone's reality tunnel makes perfect sense to them and uh, so the scientific materialists everything they're looking at it through this reality tunnel and everything they're seeing looks scientifically materialism but then another perspective is monotheism or creationism and uh, to, to summarize my understanding of, of, of a general perspective on creationism is that there's this external God creator in kind of this spiritual realm which then created the material realm and so the material realm isn't really that special it's, it's really all about the spiritual realm up here. And uh, so this life, I mean, it's, it's decent, but we really need to just get to heaven. Um, and I don't personally resonate with that very much because I feel like the material realm is very sacred and very beautiful. And, um, and so in, in, monotheism it kind of came after this thing called animism which is what most indigenous people generally believe which is that everything is alive everything is animated with spirit and it's not that <clears throat> it's not that things are like matter with spirit put in them like an envelope it's that matter is spirit spirit and matter are the same thing and uh, interestingly enough, that's what quantum science is, is largely explaining today, that spirit and matter are completely intertwined, and they're not these separate realms or categories. And I think a lot of people in kind of the New Age uh, movement 
get kind of tied up in like, okay, now is when I'm going to be spiritual. I'm going to listen to this this uh, spiritual music, which I have playing right here. It is pretty enjoyable music, a lot of it, but some people say like, okay, this is when I'm spiritual, and this is when I'm not spiritual. But the, the animism perspective, and a lot of these cutting edge quantum perspectives is that everything is sacred, everything is animated all the time. You're never not being spiritual because it's just all one continuum. And I, I resonate with that perspective a lot. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of like the third option. One is that there's no God. One is that there is a God that's separate and controlling everything. And then there's kind of this third option. I mean, there's many, many options. I'm generalizing. But this third option kind of says that um, everything is simultaneously random. Well, there's certain aspects of evolution and everything that are random, but then there's a lot that's also predetermined. And uh, for example, in this qu the quantum field study, that I Einstein has a quote that says, the quantum field is the sole governing agent of the particle. So really it's this immaterial energy field that is kind of underneath all of the material realm that gives rise to it. So essentially there's these patterns which are predetermined. A lot of people call them sacred geometry or the, fla the flower of life. It's kind of like the universe has these general patterns that that it's made out of at its very core and then things arise from that and there's some randomness in that um, that kind of ties in with chaos theory where everything is chaotic but orderly at the same time it deals with a lot of paradox um, and I'm just scratching the surface of all these I really want to just stimulate some brain activity and conversation here about God and the universe and reality tunnels and um, yeah I feel like the the concept of God is such we have such baggage attached to it and labels that a lot of people hear the word God and they just like shy away and they don't want anything to do with anything that says the word God but I think it's really fascinating to explore what people actually perceive as God or what is this God doing um, and going along with what I was mentioning before um, Hermes who worked on Hermeticism kind of gave this perspective that creation or the universe is 90% done 90% finished and then there's this 10% that we can kind of play with and have fun with. That's kind of an interesting perspective. That, that kind of goes along with the simultaneously predetermined, but also, um, also we have potential to change things and it's, not, and it's not random. We're not completely fated to do anything. We have some free will. Um, and uh, a lot of people these days bounce around the term of spirituality. I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious, you know? Um, that seems to be like the pop culture thing to be spiritual, but not religious. You know, I do my yoga and I, maybe I wear some, uh, some mantra beads, but I don't go to church or anything. And uh, this book here, which is one of my favorites, Eckhart Tolle says spirituality and religion you know I think I'm gonna read this like a with an Indian accent I think that'll be funny what is the role of established religions in the arising of the new consciousness many people are already aware of the difference between spirituality and religion they realize that having a belief system a set of thoughts that you regard as the absolute truth does not make you spiritual. 
no matter what the nature of those beliefs is. In fact, the more you make your thoughts, beliefs, into your identity, the more cut off you are from that spiritual dimension inside yourself. Many religious people are stuck at that level. They equate truth with thought, and as they are completely identified with thought, their mind, they claim to be in sole possession of the truth in an unconscious attempt to protect their identity. They don't realize the limitations of thought. Unless you believe, think, exactly as they do, you are wrong in their eyes. And in the not too distant past, they would have felt justified in killing you for that. And some still do, even now. The new spirituality, the transformation of consciousness, is arising to a large extent outside the structures of the existing institutionalized religions. There are always pockets of spirituality even in mind-dominated religions, although the institutionalized hierarchies felt threatened by them and often tried to suppress them. A large-scale oppression of spirituality outside of the religious structures is an entirely new development. In the past, this would have been inconceivable, even in the West, the most mind-dominated of all cultures, where the Christian church had a virtual franchise on spirituality. You couldn't just stand up and give a spiritual talk or publish a spiritual book unless you were sanctioned by the church. And if you were not, they would quickly silence you. But now, even within certain churches and religions, there are signs of change. It is heartwarming, and one is grateful for even the slightest signs of openness, such as John pa Pope John Paul II visiting a mosque as well as a synagogue. So... I should be I should shame on myself for speaking in a different accent because I need to take religion seriously. I think that's one of the funny things is pe how serious people take religion and spirituality and there's no fun in it and uh, that's one of the things that really turns me off of of certain spiritual paths is that they're just constantly in this serious reality tunnel where everything's serious and whoever made this world up whether it was uh, the separate god or whatever or the magical aliens somehow we have this huge gamut of 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 experience like happiness and joy and laughter and play and fun and everything and it's like to be like constantly this ascetic seems so silly and you're almost you're almost uh disregarding these what's been given to you you're not taking you're not being grateful for it if you're not having fun and that's what I think a lot of indigenous cultures have they have these amazingly fun and cel sacred celebrations and they're constantly celebrating and they're involved in the play of of life and uh, I really am inspired a lot by indigenous cultures and their whole spirituality of the universe um, so another perspective is is that science is kind of putting out is um, that everything is came out of this singularity and that the universe basically burst into existence and then created this double Taurus um, pattern which is basically like two Cheerios, kind of a spherical Cheerio that morphs from a singularity out into multiplicity and then back into, into oneness. And some people say that that process is happening 50 billion times a second and that's what the universe is. Or maybe it's happening really slowly and it's, we're, we're 14 billion years in right now. And uh, I like to think of it as maybe Maybe we all came from this oneness and we're bursting out 
and right now we're at this crazy point of of separation where we feel super separate from this oneness and that's why there's so much suffering everywhere and we're starting to move back towards oneness again and that's why all these synchronicities are happening you know it's like of course there's going to be synchronicities and coincidences if we all came from the same thing and we're all flowing back into the same thing um, so that's a perspective I like to entertain but I really just like to entertain all these theories and kind of live from the one that feels most right to me and that's what I encourage you to do just not be trapped into one reality tunnel have a a flexible reality tunnel that and and a compassionate reality tunnel where you recognize that everybody else in the whole world was born into having that reality tunnel and they're just walking around with those glasses on and you can't really blame them um, I'll post a link to the other video I made about reality tunnels. Um, it's really fascinating to explore that concept, I feel. Um, but amidst all of this happiness and, and fun, I do recognize that there is immense, immense suffering happening on our planet right now. And I, I don't understand it. I mean, I don't claim to understand it. Um, I feel that perhaps one of the only ways we could seem to grasp it is through believing in reincarnation that somehow it's a process that souls or people need to go through in order to learn lessons and have this immense suffering and that if we are all truly interconnected then it's not it's that we all are experiencing this suffering on some level and that we all perhaps perhaps you journey through every th single soul in your whole life I'll post a link to the egg egg essay um, that kind of explains that because um, yeah I mean that's that's one of the things that keeps me questioning it's just like why do people have to suffer so much and uh, some people that's why they're hardcore atheists is because they're just like there's no way there could be any higher power or purpose to anything because of there's all this unnecessary suffering and uh, I do see where they're coming from on that um, my personal experience has has affirmed for me that there are many forces and energies at play that are way larger than my little individual self and I think it's very arrogant to I think a lot of atheists are kind of very self-righteous in that I'm the ruler of the universe um, whereas I believe that there are all these forces at play I don't really understand them I'm trying to get a, an idea about them um, but I'm really just an explorer who knows very little <laughs> and uh, I'm here exploring this crazy mystery with you that's what a lot of the native people call it the great mystery because we don't know anything we know a fraction of a fraction of a fraction and uh, it's just really funny to think we know everything <laughs> um, so basically, just to run through again, I mean, I would really love your input on any of these perspectives, but just some of the ones I went through was scientific materialism, kind of the atheist perspective, um, where everything is pretty much random and purposeless, and we're just like atoms bumping up against each other, and somehow we have these bodies, but who knows. And then there's monotheism, creationism, which believes in one God that's separate from the material world. And then there's animism, which believes that everything is alive, everything is sacred. And that kind of ties in with um, chaos theory and the quantum mechanical views, wherein spirit and matter are the same thing or they're entangled. And uh, and then there's the whole Eckhart 
Bartoli perspective, which um, kind of brings spirituality as a separate from religion um, and talks a lot about consciousness and that everything is really just consciousness experiencing itself which is a cool way to look at it I think that's what Bill Hicks said I'll post the link to the Bill Hicks video too um, but yeah then there's all these millions of questions like why is there so much suffering is reincarnation real how does it work there's just millions of questions I encourage you to keep asking questions though that can also drive you insane to keep asking questions. I think there's a point where you can just relax and say, I'm here in the great mystery and I accept it as a huge <laughs> freaking mystery. So, scoobly doo, those are some perspectives on God, the universe, and reality tunnels, and many other things. So. Thank you for watching. Please post a video response if you feel compelled. You can get one of these Kodak ZI8 cameras for like a hundred dollars. I've made like 400 YouTube videos with this one little camera. It's pretty crazy. And or you can write a comment or you can check out my Facebook page which I use as a blog which is facebook.com slash Phil's ideas. And they're not really my ideas. They're just kind of flowing through my brain. <laughs> Anywho, peace and love to you.